So this could be potentially the last video of Harvest 2020. We're kind of wrapping up the tail end of it. Uh, we'll just see how these next few days go. And we'll go from there. So yesterday our auger kind of crapped out on us that loads grain bins. And so we're compromising. We don't have time to fix it. We just want to get done and so we're going to use bags on the remainder so i'm going to load one up here and hopefully one more bag should get us now i'm going to load it in my pickup but i need to get a 300 footer these are 250s and i'm not sure if this guy starts here so i might have to get the other one sounds about right <laughs> that's how this one ever since we've gotten it always started it takes about 10 seconds Anybody else have the urge to call them Sparkies? Since you know, like Clark, Christmas vacation. Or am I the only one there? Hey Sparky, not so Sparky this morning. So what we think what happened is there's sections of auger in here and you get them bolted together. We think one of those bolts sheared. Not exactly sure, but it's it's shear and shear bolts. And uh, we've had that happen before on a different auger, so. Just put on a bag. It's a little bit of work, folks. I'm not gonna lie. So kind of typical on our operation, we'll start in the center. Maybe I've covered this before, but for those of you new to the channel, when you got center pivots, it's you usually start in the center and work do one side, and then you can move Take that pivot out of the way. Side. And then uh, we can uh, go to the other side. So we usually don't just start at one end of the field and work clear across. So right now I'm breaking a new land, and we can't see the other end of the field because whoa, something must have happened there. Down court. Anyway. One thing that's nice is you can utilize, say the other combines at the other end, which he is, kind of that black dot there, I'm coming through on this side. As I can tell him out, this number right here, I'm coming through on 65E, well if he pulls in on 66E, he should be coming down this pass right over here to my left. So that's just one way, uh, you can kind of use your GPS to help you out, especially on these hilly hills, right, hilly hills as opposed to flat hills. Today could be the last day for our corn uh, getting harvest. That's if the weather holds. It's misty out today. It was windy for a while, kind of stopped, and we're able to kind of go, but when it's wet, you'll kind of get this, what they call butt chilling. And I'll see if I can't slow it down for you when I get time, but the bottom of that ear will kind of hit. It'll When it gets a little tougher out, it'll kind of shell those bottom kernels out just a little bit more. See, we don't have very much left. So this is kind of what we're ended up on. It's it's actually a little dry land nug cut out from that irrigated over there. We just don't lay the pipe out around here because it's not worth it. But yeah, this is the last few rows for us for uh, 2020. Here we go. It's a big, long row. it 2020 is in the cloud it's a good thing to have done i know we got some more custom jobs to do but when yours is done it's just the stress of uh having your crop still out in that field vulnerable to any kind of wind or anything knowing it's in the bin that's a good feeling we'll go ahead over and top dad off or not top him off he probably won't have enough for a full load but we're gonna send it because we ain't got any more it's always a bump The 
plan is now is to move our stuff to the next custom field, get it set up ready for tomorrow hopefully, and then hopefully we can hit it tomorrow and wipe out some acres there, get it done. Call that good. This should be the final day of harvest 2020. my junk a little bit. Gotta have your coffee, folks. So kind of in dealing with all this stuff, another thing that this combine's equipped with, or a lot of them from the factory are equipped with now, is called Active Yield. Those load cells back there, kind of those silver discs, what those are is little weigh scales, and uh, every load when you're when you're uh, filling even, on level ground, what those will do is take like a a weight every time you're filling up so it's always trying to calibrate your yield monitor to try to keep it as accurate as possible and this year I've had better luck with it than last year uh, it's been working pretty good so far I got to pick off these in rows here so we'll chat later I'll have a got a spider I can take a dump on you <laughs> so I think I missed it on my camera but I was catching the tail end and I, I, I was excited so I didn't hit the record button right but there's a huge like my guess would be like a five by five buck and he got excited and he tried jumping this wire but I don't think I think he misjudged it because he clipped his leg and he went rolling down the hill got back up and took off but it's kind of amazing some of the stuff you see out here with the wildlife the stuff we're picking now has got a white cob on it so the bees wings that are on it which is kind of where the corn attaches to the, the cob are flown around it looks a lot like snow out there if you can see it so i'm waiting for a cart right now so i might as well show you something about our corn heads and i've kind of discussed this before in the past but for those of you who knew the channel where we do a lot of minimum till stuff like strip till and no till one of the ways we help break down this residue is a lot of these bio bt stocks or gmo stocks are getting tougher and so one way we try to grind them down is we started util utilizing these intermeshing stock rolls. These are made by Calmer. And what they do, they'll tend to grind that corn stock because when that corn stock comes through, it's going to be pulled down. And that's what rips off your ear here is these deck plates, which are kind of getting wore out. We'll have to replace these. When that comes through, that's going to grind that stock down. Well, you still got this fluff on top. But when you kind of get down here, it'll kind of confetti these these corn stalks underneath a lot more. Well, that just helps break them down a lot better, especially for our, our strip till and our no-till operations. This field right here is uh, ridged till or ridged because it's gravity, water flows down these rows, so you gotta leave a ridge there. This is 115 day corn, so it's a little bit longer season for our area. Yours aren't bad, this field's actually doing fairly well. I'd say it's doing probably, he'll probably end up doing 240, maybe, by the time we're all said and done. First and goal, Martinez gives it off the middle, he just down with one lead, and they go up, touchdown, one official says touchdown, now they both do, it's a touchdown for Nebraska. Well, I hope it stands. I don't know guys, this might be the last cart that will get us done anyway. We'll probably still have some left on the combine, but see over here, I got like three passes, those are tram lines or my AB line that my auto track follows, and I got three passes over here. And he's got one more pass over there, so these aren't very long rows. Wait for it. This is Blue Angel stuff right here, folks. Now it's just matching his speed. But wait, there's more. So we got another custom job kind of show up. So I'm gonna head over here, 
we're just gonna run the one machine today because it's hard to get the crew all back together after you kind of tell them they can quit so one one machine we just got a quarter to do a pivot and then hopefully we'll get that done and so we'll see how that goes but right now i'm gonna start one of the trucks for my sister-in-law so it's nice and toasty for her because right now it's 20 degrees and so we like to keep the ladies on our, on our good side because that helps out a lot check the kitty cat here eh, it's in the middle of it <laughs> Kind of let it rev up just a little bit more than what it usually does. Check the tires. Should have a bat, but usually you can tell if you really got a low one with your fingers. Not pretty, but we'll see if I get it to set up. Sometimes just by rolling it ahead, it'll move that tire enough and seal it up. So nailed it. Maybe you guys got it on camera. Oh, come on, stay on there. Just gotta create a seal. It's a little safer than probably lighting a fire ring trick, but that's effective too, so whatever gets it done. So I just shot diesel on my camera. This gets expensive. So I might just stick with my phone from here on out, I don't know. I usually keep better care of that than I do those cameras. Yeah, the 16 row is working really good. It's a beautiful day today. We're just running the one machine, like I mentioned, but the reason why we're kind of demoing this 16 row is this was planted with a 16 row planter. And just sometimes on these hillsides, you'll get some guest rows. And so we thought this would be a perfect match. Time to try it out again. So he's getting ready to roll. Luckily with our combines, they're equipped with the 26 foot augers. So it's able to handle the 40 foot head. It's got the five speed feeder house, which is the heavier duty version. So it, it's set up to handle that. The only thing different versus this than a 780 would be the engine size. So yeah, now I'm heading back to go get my pickup that's like a quarter mile away. I got some appointments at this afternoon that I got to take off to, so that's where I'm going to be heading. I'd rather be out here trying out stuff though. You'll have to get used to how far over you're... <laughs> professional operator right here. So I'm running the hog today. I'm breaking a new land. It's a little frosty out, but I just got done checking the sieves and everything's dry back there. So that's the main thing, just a little frosty on the plant. So let's see how this thing works. In case you were wondering how many room we got between the head and the drain cart, there's a couple rows, maybe three, I can't remember. I was running the cart. Might be two rows between the back of the cart and the head, so there's there's adequate space. So one thing that's different about these heads versus ours is 
Essentially ours is a 612C, kind of the later serial number for those of you guys that can understand that. So um, there's a break in those 600 series where there was kind of an upgrade. Uh, this is a 716, so it's the 700 series. So they kind of had a few upgrades. Um, ours, one of ours has the Romax upgrade kit, so it's a little bit more like this one. One of the things I'm kind of noticing with this head is it's a little more responsive with the sensors. I don't know if that's just an age thing or if it's just actually a, um, a settings thing or calibration for the head. So it'd be interesting to talk to the, to the deer guy about that. But I'm really liking the head. I mean, it's doing a great job. This is pretty short ear corn on this hillside there. And it's able to kind of scoop under it especially on these hillsides, pretty decently. Granted, if you always have a 12, you're, the narrower you are, the easier it's gonna be, but I'm just kind of, that was one of our concerns is, you know, adding those extra couple of rows on each end. How much difference does that make? One of the other things we're liking about this head is it's equipped with the John Deere and the meshing rolls, which is kind of a, if you guys, kind of seen our earlier videos or maybe I've mentioned we have the calmer snapping rolls. I think I actually mentioned it in, the, in this video. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm getting so strung out on my videos. But they intermesh and they grind that stock up and calmer was kind of the first to kind of design something similar to that that aggressively. I know there's probably others out there so let me know if you do know of any. But this is uh, equipped with the deer intermeshing ones and so we really liking them. I wouldn't say they're better or worse. I can't really tell a difference. They're doing the same job to me. So it would essentially come down to price um, when we go to upgrade ours or upgrade heads or something like that. Well, folks, maybe this is wrap number two on Harvest 2020. Hey guys, this should wrap it up for Harvest 2020 this year. I appreciate you following along this harvest. I know I didn't get a lot of content like I usually did last year. I uh, just had a lot of things going on. But I, yeah, once again, I appreciate it. Hope If you have any questions, just ask them in the comments below um, or get a hold of me somehow on social media. But yeah, really thank you. Um, we'll catch you on the next one. Later, guys. <laughs>